Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Global Education's Virtual Expo. Um, this evening, we have the University of Sheffield with us tonight. We're just going to wait a couple of minutes for everyone to log on, then we'll start. Okay, perfect. So welcome again, everyone. We are Global Education. We are an education agency that represents the University of Sheffield. We help you with your whole application process. We help you with your student visa, accommodation, booking um, your IELTS tests, um, your UCAS, putting in your UCAS applications. So we are your direct link between yourselves and the University of Sheffield. We assist you with everything. Um, please feel free to pop in all your questions that you might have um, during the presentation in the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. We'll sure, be sure to answer you and Daniel will answer you all your questions at the end. So without wasting any more time, here I'm handing over to Daniel from the University of Sheffield. Brilliant. Thank you so much, um, Christina. Um, so good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, today's uh, session. Uh, my name is Daniel Walkup and I'm the International Regional Manager uh, for, um, for students coming from Southern Africa, so in particularly South Africa, uh, Zimbabwe, etc. So I'm going to give you a, today a presentation regarding uh, the University of Sheffield, uh, lots of information um, about it. Um, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to get lots of information from uh, out of today's session. Um, so these are some of the different topics which we're going to be covering um, and um, hopefully as part of today's uh, session you'll have lots of questions and please put them in the chat as Christina uh, mentioned and we'll get through them as uh, quick as we can. So um, yeah, if we look at why I choose the University of Sheffield um, and why thousands of international students uh, come to come and study uh, with us every year, um, I thought I'd give you a little bit of, of history to start off with. So the University of Sheffield um, started as a penny donation university. So uh, the people of Sheffield really wanted to have a university in the city. Everybody gave penny donations. Um, and then we have the university that we, that we now have. The picture that you can see on the screen and, and the one behind me is the in, in traditional red brick university um, building that you see. It's the one that maybe you imagine a British university to look like, maybe on things like um, Harry Potter, um, etc. The university itself started with just 114 students um, and, it, and now we have uh, around 29,000 students. So we've certainly grown um, over the years uh, when we first got our university status. As an institution, we are a world top 100 university with regards to the QS World University Rankings this year, 2021. We're also a member of the UK's prestigious Russell Group um, of research-led universities with a real global reputation for research quality, um, teaching excellence, um, and also our links with businesses, um, etc. We're also among the world top 50 most international universities in the world, um, and that was from the Times Higher Education 2018. As a university, we have a real reputation of teaching excellence that has attracted thousands of students to come and study here at the University of Sheffield. As I mentioned before, we have about 29,000 students, which makes us kind of a, a medium to large based university here in the UK, from over 150 different countries. Our academics are incredibly passionate about the, the teaching that they deliver to you. Um, we are ranked uh, number 22 out of 250 institutions 
um, across Europe for our teaching quality. We're also the teaching that you receive from the academics and professors. They're world renowned in their in their fields that they're studying, whether that being in sciences or engineering or arts and humanities, etc. So the academics that you'll be learning from, they will also be doing their research as well. And if there are any PhD students or postgraduate taught students looking to come and study in a particular field today, majority, 99% um, of our research is globally recognised um, and makes us a top 10% of UK universities for our research, which we do here at the university. We have a real broad range of subject areas that we cover and we're into five main faculties. So we have the Faculty of Science, we also have the Faculty of Engineering, Medicine, Dentistry and Health, Arts and Humanities and also Social Sciences. And as you can see here from the list we have an abundance of different subject areas from archaeology all the way down to urban studies and planning, zoology um, and all of the different subject areas in between. If you've got any specific questions about any of the courses which we offer or um, do we have certain courses, then please put them in the chat and we'll be able to let you know. What I wanted to do is just kind of talk to you a little bit about some of our particular subject areas which rank incredibly highly. So the School of Architecture here at Sheffield ranks really highly um, within the different league tables. It's um, top three within the United Kingdom um, and also it's a, a world top 20 architecture school. We've also got the School of Journalism and which ranks incredibly highly alongside the School of Politics and International Relations. One of our faculties which um, is uh, we're incredibly proud of is our Faculty of Engineering. The Faculty of Engineering at Sheffield is one of the biggest and best providers of engineering research and teaching and education in the UK. We have over 6,700 students studying engineering here at Sheffield with an annual research income of over £100 million, which ranks as number two um, in all research income in terms of in the UK. We have a number of different schools and departments in our Faculty of Engineering, that you can see here. So we've got automatic control and systems engineering, and which also specialise in things such as robotics, chemical and biological engineering, civil and structural, computer science, electronic and electrical, material science, mechanical engineering, aerospace, bioengineering, and we also have a general engineering um, undergraduate programme as well, which focuses in a number of different areas in your first year. And then in your from your um, second year, uh, third year onwards, you then focus in a particular area of engineering. The Faculty of Engineering is also ranked number one in the Russell Group for its student satisfaction. So the students are incredibly happy and um, pleased with the teaching and education that they're receiving. Another of our um, more popular programmes um, at the University of Sheffield is our management school. So our management school is a triple crown accredited uh, management school which puts the University of Sheffield with a real global elite of business schools. There are around 15,000 business and management schools worldwide granting business degrees but less than um, fewer than 100 actually have the triple crown accreditation for the three different accredited bodies um, which as I mentioned before really puts us in the global elite of business schools. So it's definitely an endorsement of the quality of teaching and research and links with industry, which our management school has at Sheffield. We also have um, a number of different accreditations which recognise our degrees internationally, which allows good business networking opportunities and really, really strong alumni community, and particularly if you're returning back to um, your home country or decide to stay here in the UK once you finish your degree to potentially work. And um, something else that the university is incredibly proud of is something called the AMRC, which is the Advanced Manufacturing Research um, Centre. This is a network of world leading research uh, and innov um, innov innovation centres. Um, the centre itself is a leader in manufacturing technologies and has built a real global reputation as an exemplary partnership between education and industry. So the University of Sheffield is currently working with big global giants such as McLaren, Siemens, BAE, BAE 
um, who are all based at the AMRC. So in a nutshell, we're helping manufacturers to become more competitive using advanced techniques and technologies and processes using the, the research that the University of Sheffield does. Some of our graduates from the university have, sought out, have been sought out by some of the most um, recognizable employers in the world. Uh, we're currently top in the north of England for graduate prospects because our courses develop uh, the skills that you need, which global employers are looking for. So hopefully you'll recognize some of the big uh, companies um, that you have on your screen from this slide. Um, and these companies are specifically looking for Sheffield graduates. So on top of that, what do we actually offer the students um, in terms of the kind of the career focused opportunities? Because obviously you're coming to university and you want to get a really good job once you graduate from university. Um, it's becoming more um, competitive. So you really want to make sure that you stand out. So on campus, we've got career development days with guest lectures, CV writing um, and interview workshops, et cetera. Off campus, we can also help you organize things like work placements, work experience and mentors. Those could be mentors who have done your course or potentially from the region that you come from in the world. Information guidance um, on employability, kind of careers advice, um, any kind of advice where certain resources are. Um, the careers team um, will so certainly support you with that as well. So there's lots of um, support which is available for you um, if you decide to come to study here at Sheffield and we will try to support you as much as we can, trying to make you as employable as possible. Um, so therefore you'll be um, hopefully get a good job once you graduate from, from university. Um, but we're not just about increasing your employability. We also want to make sure that you enjoy your time with us from start to finish and create lifelong memories studying here in Sheffield. So we currently have over 300 different clubs and societies for you to be able to choose from. Uh, and those can vary from things which are as part of your subject. So maybe psychology or engineering society through to cheerleading, basketball, knitting, cooking. So there's a society for everybody out there. We're also really proud to say that we are um, top five in the UK for student experience and number two in the Russell Group for student satisfaction. So these students that come to Sheffield are very, very happy, really satisfied um, and have a great student experience when they come to study with us. So on top of that, uh, one of the main things that you'll be involved with if you come to university and particularly at Sheffield is our students union. So our Students' Union has been voted number one in the UK for the last four years running. Um, and that's something which is um, voted for by students um, by a guide called What's Uni Student Choice Awards. And um, because we offer some of the best facilities and support services, our students feel that the Students' Union really represents them in the best possible way. So the Students' Union is an organisation that you can benefit from and to become part of. Uh, a student may be elected you can um, represent um, your, your area of interest, whether that be education, welfare, sport, etc. The building itself, the Students' Union building itself, is one of the biggest and most active students' unions in the UK, um, in Sheffield. The building is a real hub of student life, ranging with shops, cafes, bars. There's also a nightclub in the one in Sheffield. Um, there's places there which also offer things like advice and guidance. Um, where you can go and speak to it with regards to accommodation, um, guidance on visas, immigration, and anything else that you need support and help with. Within the Students' Union, they also um, organise things such as comedy and music gigs, film nights, theatre performances, and so many different activities that you can want to get involved with. We also have a job shop as well, um, which advertise job opportunities, part-time work, and support that you may want to get um, if you decide to come here in Sheffield and um, wish to get a part-time job. So thousands of international students come to study here um, in the University of Sheffield. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about some of the things that we've got on specifically on campus. So the Diamond Building is one of our most recent developments here at the University. It was an £81 million investment specifically in teaching and learning. And it offers a real unique space um, 
to create and learn. It's specifically used by engineering students, some journalism students, some are because of the facilities that we've got in the building. But anyone can use it in terms of um, studying, etc. But it's a huge uh, kind of striking state of the art structure, which is um, an internationally renowned facility for innovative teaching and learning. Um, you can uh, have all of your labs in there, study space. Um, there's lots and lots of um, opportunities to be able to use the down for sure. And hopefully if you come to Sheffield, you'll be able, be able, able to use it. Um, the libraries are really important, of course, whilst being a student. Uh, they're the kind of the heart of the campus as long as well with the Students' Union. At Sheffield, we've got over a million different books and periodicals and over a thousand different computers. So if you need to use those services, you can do. Our library services were also voted joint number one in the UK for library services and the Times Higher Education student experience survey. So you'll get lots of support um, with regards to our libraries and they're open 24-7, 365 days of the year. With regards to our accommodation, um, we make she living in Sheffield really easy. So we do everything that we can to ensure that you find somewhere that kind of meets your budget. So if you choose to live in university accommodation, we guarantee to find you somewhere to live as long as you meet a kind of a few simple conditions um, and the deadlines. And we're also able to help you find accommodation for any dependents if you're traveling to the UK with family too. Most of our accommodation is located within a really easy reach to our campus. Most of the rooms are en suite and um, also self catered. All our accommodation has free Wi-Fi, 24 seven security and maintenance uh, and, our, um, and are included in our prices such as gas, electricity and the water bills as well. So there's lots of different um, accommodation which is available for the students and you'll be able to look on our website or ask me further if you need any more information and advice on the accommodation which we offer. Obviously studying here um, in Sheffield isn't just about the university, but you'll be also spending a lot of time exploring the city and around Sheffield and why it's been voted one of the world's best student cities um, in the world. So first, whereabouts in Sheffield. So if we're looking at the UK on a map, um, Sheffield is located right in the middle of the United Kingdom. It's in a region called Yorkshire, which is one of the biggest regions um, in the UK. Um, which has an abundance of beautiful countryside, um, regional cuisine, such as Yorkshire puddings, you've maybe heard of those before, um, and also lots of things to do and activities, um, vibrant nightlife, which will kind of suit anybody's um, taste. Sheffield itself is located in South Yorkshire, um, which is just an hour away from Manchester and 45 minutes away from Manchester Airport. And there is a direct train from Manchester Airport, which is the closest largest um, international airport um, to Sheffield. The train goes directly from Manchester Airport into Sheffield city centre. London is only two hours away via train as well and there's a train that departs Sheffield for London every 30 minutes. Sheffield really is a city like no other. Um, it's the fourth largest city in the UK giving residents um, much to explore. Um, and here's a really beautiful image of the, the kind of the urban city that you see of Sheffield there um, with the beautiful hills surrounding it. Um, and these students are just relaxing in a park and you'll hear a lot more about kind of the green spaces that we have here in Sheffield. So Sheffield is a real cultural centre on the edge of a national park. 60% of the city is actually in green space, which makes it one of the UK's and Europe's greenest cities um, in Europe. There are over 2 million trees, 250 gardens and parks and woodland areas um, in the city, which makes it um, more parks and woodland areas than any other UK city. A third of the city actually lies within the border of the Peak District National Park. And this is the image that you can see is a picture of the, the Peak District, which is a beautiful um, national park on the doorstep of Sheffield. So as well in city, it's an incredibly outdoor city. So if you love um, kind of the outdoors um, and culture, enjoy running, walking, climbing, anything like that, then Sheffield will be a great city and great option for you. 
If not, and then coming to Sheffield, you'll certainly explore as part of that, being able to visit this beautiful national park and uh, walking in the Peak District is uh, something a lot of students do um, to relax, etc. Sheffield is um, also a reasonably affordable city to live in. So it's 25% cheaper uh, and more affordable than London. And the living costs are 10% lower than the UK national average as well. So it's definitely an affordable city to live in. Your money will go much further if you enjoy going out with friends to cafes, restaurants, um, and also being able to spend money on maybe trips to see friends in the UK or Europe. Um, it's certainly an opportunity to do that. It's also an incredibly safe city as well, and it's been voted one of the UK's um, safest major cities. Um, and that was in the England's um, peace, uh, UK Peace Index. It's also been awarded a purple flag, making it a really uh, safe city um, for students to be able to have a night out um, to as well. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's been voted one of the world's best student cities in 2018. Uh, in total in Sheffield, there are about 60,000 students between the two major universities which are located in Sheffield. Um, so yeah, the students definitely have a, a really positive time um, in getting to visit all the different areas and go out with their friends. This is one area in Sheffield where there's many different um, cafes and restaurants, lots of independent places for coffees and drinks, etc. So yeah, it's a really, really lovely time. As I mentioned before, we're a very, very green city, but we've also got some beautiful um, historic buildings. Uh, these buildings are in Sheffield. And also the picture at the top right hand um, that you can see there is Chatsworth House, which maybe you've seen uh, in movies such as Pride and Prejudice um, and The Duchess, etc. So we're an incredibly international university. Um, as I mentioned before, we've got over students from 150 different countries and um, students come to study in Sheffield, but we also have many different prestigious universities worldwide that we work with. So if you wanted to do something like a year in um, a year overseas as part of your undergraduate degree, that's certainly something that you can do. And also with some postgraduate courses as well, there's an opportunity to do a part of your course a semester abroad, etc. So yeah, we're an incredibly um, global institution here in Sheffield. So with regards to um, looking after you and supporting you, we'll support you as much as we can. Um, I'm here as the regional manager to be able to support students that come from, um, from Africa, um, but we've also got a team who will be able to give um, a kind of experience and um, advice uh, to uh, international students. So we have a team which will be able to give visa advice um, and be able to support you with that. We also have to be able to offer things like an airport pickup service from Manchester Airport. We'll be able to pick up students when they arrive and then bring them back to Sheffield. So we'll try to support you as much as we can throughout your journey. So we have some scholarships here at the university. Um, for undergraduates, we have a scholarship which is uh, offering 50 scholarships to high achieving undergraduates. Um, it is a competitive process, but um, we're able to offer 50% discount off the tuition fees for the years that you're studying here at the university. We also offer percent discount if students apply to us and accept their offer from the University of Sheffield before um, the middle of June as well. So we do have um, some really good uh, opportunities for scholarships, um, in particularly for the regions that you're coming from. We also are able to offer some postgraduate scholarships as well. So we help offer 150 postgraduate scholarships worth 25% of the tuition fees. Again, these are for high achieving postgraduate students who make a really good application um, and um, hold an offer obviously to come and study here at the University of Sheffield. At the university, if you ever feel like you would like to get in contact with a student, there's lots of opportunities to be able to do that. So you can find us on different social media, um, and particularly through things like Facebook and Instagram, where you'll be able to connect with the university, follow some of the stories, um, look through some of the pictures, etc. But you'll also be able to get in touch with some students. So 
if you use the, the web address there, which is www.sheffield.ac.uk forward slash study forward slash chat, you can filter um, students that you would wish to chat to. So you can filter them by region if you're particularly looking to chat with a student from an, an area that you come from, or you can also filter students by their subject area. Um, again, if you've got any specific questions about the subject that you're looking to study, you can ask them directly. Um, you know, can you tell me a little bit more information about the course here at Sheffield, certain modules, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, it's a really good opportunity to be able to ask your questions directly to our current students. So on the next slide, we've just got a little video to play for you um, about um, the university. Hopefully it works okay. Okay, so what do you need to do next? So hopefully through that presentation, you have decided that maybe the University of Sheffield is the right university for you, hopefully, um, and you are looking for kind of those next steps. So with regards to what you need to do, you can have a look at, look at some of our courses um, in your own time, um, whether that's for undergraduate or postgraduate. What I would recommend is to apply as soon as possible. Majority, if you're looking for a scholarship as well, majority of our scholarships will close um, at the beginning of May. And to be able to be able to receive your offer beforehand, you'll definitely need to make sure your application is in with to the university by the middle of March, which therefore has time to be able to get your offer back to you and then to be able to apply for things like scholarships etc so make sure that you don't miss any deadlines get in touch with us if you've got any questions uh, and of course um, the guys here at global education um, Christina and her team will be able to support you with your application if you decide to move forward um, with the coming to University of Sheffield and um, of course I'm, off, um, I'm here to support you as well um and um yeah here's just some pictures of me saying yeah this is who i am and i am uh talking to students on a regular basis not just in a virtual world um but my email address is there as well so if you wanted to to take um uh, make a note of the email address you can and you can email me with any questions and um, that you wish as well so i'll just leave that up for a second um and um i guess as well we will come through to the um, to the Q&A if there's any specific questions that anybody has. Perfect. Thank you so much, Daniel, for the very informative presentation. I'm just going to quickly share my screen one moment there with our um, contact details as well. Um, so let's jump in straight into the questions. We've got a question from Jane asking, what are the admission requirements for law and criminology? And does she need um, history if she did English literature and language for, do they need it for the degree? Okay. Law and so with regards to the entry requirements, what um, it'll be good to know what qualification the students currently um, studying. Okay, so let's are they doing A levels or IB or I'm? Um, okay, let's see if she might um, send another question in. No problem. You can just type it. Uh, um, another question, Jane. You can just write what um, what qualification you currently hold. Okay, and then would you need English literature and language? So with regards to law um, at Sheffield, there are actually no specific um, requirements that we are looking for with regards to subject areas. And um, law is one of those really unique courses where quite often you don't need a specific um, courses to be able to get through to them. 
Okay, great. So I think she's doing A levels. I just see that. Yeah. Um, so for law and, and criminal, the student will need Jane. You'll need to get um, two A's and a B to get onto our law and criminology program. The um, crim law and criminology program at Sheffield is quite a unique program because it's actually um, LLB, um, which is unique because quite often when you combine law and criminology, um, because of the how it is you you would lose your llb status and it becomes a ba um but the criminology school at sheffield is within our um school of law so therefore we specialize in criminal law um, and therefore we're still able to keep the llb status so um if jane was depending on obviously her future aspirations once she's finished the program um uh, in terms of the areas that she's looking to go into and because of that LLB status it just opens up the doors um, a lot more so yeah two A's and a B ideally to get into um, to get into our law and criminology program perfect thank you so much Daniel that was a good answer um, we've got another two questions from Saxon he's asking um, does the University of Sheffield offer biomedical engineering yeah, okay, so um, we we do, um, so it's a bioengineering program that we offer at Sheffield, but it has a certain um, streams within it, um, and biomedical is part of one of the streams which we offer. So for students looking to do um, bioeng bioengineering, we do offer this biomedical as part of one of the, the current streams, which is probably the, the best option for the student. We offer um, bioengineering at both um, bachelor and um, integrated masters. So you could either study the, the BEng or the, the MEng, um, depending on what the student was looking to do. Um, environments, if you're doing A-levels, would be two A's for the, the bioengineering BEng and three A's to get onto the integrated masters um, MEng we would certainly need students to do certain specific subjects. So we would need to have mathematics um, plus a second science subject. Um, and the second science subjects would be things like physics, chemistry, biology, or even human biology too, um, if they're doing that at A-level. Um, if they're not doing A-levels, we, we do accept things like the IB, um, or um, other qualifications as well, um, et cetera. So that would be our best, um, would be our best option, would be the bioengineering with the biomedical pathway uh, which we offer. So within it, we do biomedical engineering, medical devices and systems, biomaterial bio science and tissue engineering and biomanufacturing. They're all the four pathways which we do within our bioengineering program. So it can be really unique and really specialist. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in bio, biomedical engineering, perfect, that's the, that's the course for you for sure. Perfect, thank you. You seem to have answered both his questions. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> then we have another um, question from Tinashi asking, does the university offer a social work undergraduate degree? Okay, so we don't unfortunately offer social work as an undergraduate degree program. We do at postgraduate. So um, if a student was looking to do an undergraduate degree, first of all, and then continue with a postgraduate, we would be able to offer it at postgrad. Um, in terms of um, uh, social work though, we do not. The closest related programs that we would do, things like sociology, um, we also do things like sociology with social policy, but that's more around kind of debates around social justice, fairness, equality, um, et cetera. So, um, but those would be our closest related programs that we would have to, to social work. But uh, as an undergraduate degree, um, direct entry, no, it would be postgraduate. Perfect, thank you. Then we have another question um, asking, are homeschooled learners at any disadvantage if they complete their A-levels at a Cambridge accredited centre? Um, no, so um, if this, no, not at all. Um, we would be able to take a qualification, which has been, of course, 
um, are granted by the um, qualification board, whoever they're studying with. Um, so no, we've got a number of homeschool learners here in the UK and overseas, that's absolutely fine. What I would recommend is to get in touch with the centre though, with regards to how those A-levels will be um, working for this year, um, obviously due to the, the impacts of COVID-19. So I would definitely recommend them to um, do that. And then if they've got any further questions then they can get in touch with us. We have a dedicated COVID-19 FAQ page here at the university where um, students for exactly this situation um, may not be able to get things like center assessed grades etc so we would need to see certain evidence so speak with the speak with the center to start with and then um, get in touch with us if they need any further information and um, via yourselves or via me directly so uh, we'll definitely be able to support perfect thank you Daniel and um, we've got another two questions that have just come in um, Emmanuel is asking, do you offer civil engineering and what are the requirements? His son is currently doing um, his do. AS. Yeah. Okay. So for civil engineering, we do offer civil engineering. Um, civil engineering at Sheffield is one of the more um, renowned programs here that we, which we offer. We do it at both bachelor level, so a BEng. And we also offer it at the master's integrated level as well. Um, with regards to requirements for both the undergraduate bachelor's and the integrated master's, so the MEng are both three A's. So we would require three A's to get onto our um, civil and structural engineering programs. Um, with other requirements which we need, we definitely need the student to do A-level mathematics um, and Besides from that, there's, there's not another requirement which we need. Many different civil engineering and structural engineering schools in the UK often require two um, A-levels at science, but at, here at Sheffield, we just require um, one, which is, uh, which is good. So yes, we do, and um, we do do civil and structural engineering. Um, we also do um, structural um, architectural engineering, which is within our civil and structural engineering department. And we also do a joint structural engineering and architecture program. So if the student is also interested in architecture, we also offer an opportunity to do a dual, uh, dual program where they become both a civil and structural engineer and they also receive their, um, their Royal Institute of British Architect part one as well, um, which is incredibly unique. There's not many institutions in the UK that do that program. So if they're really they really like architecture and the more kind of design aspects, the more art side of things, art and design aspect things, great, but also they would need to have that mathematic background there as well. So it's a unique program. Uh, we only take about students on that each year, but if that's that's a, a program that's interesting, that student then, then fantastic. Um, so yeah, hopefully, um, yeah, a little bit of information about the civil and um, structural engineering programs, which we offer here at Sheffield. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, we've got another question from Saxon asking, is a grade A for his IGCSE English language um, test sufficient enough or would he still have to write the IELTS test? Good question. Um, so Saxon, it depends on the, um, the qualification syllabus that you have set. So we would need to have a little look at that um, a little bit closer. We accept many different English language uh, qualifications here at the university, including IGCSE, but it all depends on the syllabus. Um, majority of the time we would need a grade B or above for English uh, language. Certainly sounds like you've got that already with the grade A, so congratulations, but we would probably need to check the syllabus um, on that one. I imagine probably 90% um, of me is sure that we would be able to accept it and you wouldn't need the IELTS. But like I said, we'll, we'll need to check the, the syllabus because it can be quite unique um, from time to time. Um, but again, congrats on getting the A grade there. Okay, thank you, Daniel. And um, we've got another question from Rafael. He's asking what kind of support is available for international students who may be feeling homesick or experiencing any emotional distress? Yeah, no, uh, brilliant question. I think this year that's highlighted that more than ever. 
um, what support is available for students, um, in particularly in this virtual world that we're now um, living in. We have an, an incredible amount of support as part of our students union for um, all of our students here at the University of Sheffield and in particular our international students as well. So with regards to um, our kind of community which we have here, we are able to kind of connect international students together and they will be able to have things virtually where they can do like virtual meetups. Um, we also have support with regards to um, uh, mental health support, which maybe you may require. Um, so the University of Sheffield a couple of years ago is one of the first universities in the UK, which actually has a mental health support hub. Um, so if you need any, um, any support there, then we're able to offer that for our students. As part of your accommodation, you will also be um, part of something called Residence Life. And we have mentors, which help our first year students. Um, so you're able to make friends um, in your halls of residence, but also across your different halls. The different residences that we have at Sheffield, we have one called Encliffe Ranmore, which has around about 5,000 um, students um, in the huge student village. So I'm pretty sure there'll be someone there that you'll be able to get friendly with and, uh, and have, you know, make lots of friends. But the residence life mentors will be able to organise different um, maybe a pool competition in the pub, which is located down um, in the, uh, the student village, or maybe they will do things like quiz nights, or um, we also have like a late night coffee evening on Friday evenings at the Students' Union, um, where, you know, maybe you may go and have like a nice warm hot drink and just meet some of your, just, you know, chat with friends, etc. So yeah, there's certainly a lot of support um, available for students certainly more support um, now than when I was a student at university, which was around about um, 10 years ago now. Um, but um, yeah, there's an incredible amount of support which is available for university, uh, for university students. With regards to other support, we also take um, and religious advisors for anyone that may be part of a specific um, faith group or um, you want maybe have an opportunity to do some kind of like uh, some prayer or some spiritual, um, a setting uh, which maybe you may want some certain support with. We also at Sheffield have uh, the Student Advice Centre which gives free confidential professional advice um, on all different types of matters whether that be maybe things like money, housing, academic, welfare, employment, you name it, there's so much support and, and help available. What I would say though is the main difference between school and college and university is that you've got to go and seek support a little bit more. At the moment, if you're at school, what you'll be finding is a lot of the time the teachers will be, will be saying, hey, how's it going? Have you done this piece of homework? How's things at home? That doesn't quite happen the same at university. So all the support is there, more so than school and college, but you just have to go and find it and, and, and don't be ashamed or, or scared to do that. Um, at all. Um, so hopefully that, that's helped your, your, your answer. What I would say as well with regards to maybe feeling a bit homesick is potentially bring some home goodies. So maybe things like photos, um, food, for example. I know a lot of international students always say that, you know, you sometimes can't find like a certain like sweets or lollies or chocolate here. And, you know, it just reminds you of home when you're eating it or like herbs and spices. Some international students say, oh, you know, I really need these herbs and spices to make a particular dish. Um, so yeah, they'll often tend to do that as well. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's helped you with your question. Um, and yeah. Thanks, um, Daniel. That's great to hear that there is so much support and guidance that you offer your students. Okay, we've got um, one more question. Do you offer, um, do you have any sports clubs at Sheffield? Yeah, we do. We're, so as part of the Students' Union, we have, um, yeah, over 350 different sports clubs um, and societies. So we've got a lot of different, um, uh, different things available um, that students can get involved with. Um, so depending on what sports the students mm -hmm. looking to get involved with, um, 
there's a number of different levels that students can play at Sheffield. So whether they uh, want to just give something a go for the first time that they can do. So maybe they've never done um, rowing before. So they really want to get involved with the rowing team. They can just give it a go for the, you know, for the first time. Or in Sheffield, for example, it's the outdoor city, as I mentioned before. So a lot of students may do like climbing or bouldering and also a, a staff member. That's something that I can get involved with because we've got a climbing wall here at the university. So I'm sometimes on my lunch breaks, I can do, go and do a free 30 minute bouldering session at the university as part of give it a go. So it's exactly the same for me. Um, you can also do um, sports where it's different um, and different subjects. So maybe it's uh, business versus physics. Um, you maybe have like, um, you know, rugby and they'll be playing each other. You can also play um, as part of the books league, which is um, a league of uh, different universities all competing against each other. Um, and that's obviously really competitive. Then you can also play nationally or internationally. And we do have some sports scholarships for students that are performing at national or international level. Here in Sheffield as well, we have something called Varsity, and you probably saw some images on that video of Varsity. Um, but Varsity is basically when the University of Sheffield plays Sheffield Hallam University, which is the university here. And it's a huge competition. Uh, it's actually the most watched student uh, games outside of North America. Um, so it's uh, it's the biggest in Europe um, and um, in particular for the final match it's normally the ice hockey game and um, which probably you saw in that um, where it's the huge ice arena and all the students are going crazy uh, if you play for Sheffield you wear black and gold um, and if you play for the other team then you're in burgundy so you know everybody by who they are and the ice arena in Sheffield you have to take a tram line there so you can imagine the tram <laughs> is just full of uh, students looking you know probably around about you know 12,000 students all taking the tram up to the ice arena so sport is a huge thing in Sheffield um, and a lot of students play and there's an opportunity for you to play on, on all different levels that you want to get involved with and um and yeah, you want yeah, you want to whatever you want to try, basically. That's awesome, Daniel. Thank you. You're making all of us jealous. We can't wait for this whole COVID pandemic to yeah. ease off a bit, so we they so all our students can experience it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Hopefully, it will get a lot easier and uh, be able to do a lot more, which will be uh, which will be great. No, definitely. Thank you so much. I think that's it for all our questions this evening. Brilliant. And thank you everyone for joining. Um, you, our contact details are on screen. You're more than welcome to give us a call or pop us a mail. We can answer any more questions that you might have or if you would like to put in your applications in for um, the University of Sheffield, definitely just pop us an email. And we can also put you in contact directly with Daniel. We're more than welcome, um, more than happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one session where you can speak to him directly. Okay, thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you for your time this evening. It was really a great presentation. Thank you so much, Christina. And yeah, thank you all the students for joining and they're great questions as well. So thank you so much. Perfect, thank you and good evening, everyone.